Today we be making pirate hooks out of stemless wine glasses, plastic, copper, and a little bit of paint, and you got yourself a fancy snancy pirate hook. Arr! Interested? Stand by. Here we go. Pirate hook is really not that hard. You have options. Just a six dollar, almost seven dollar copper with you know stainless inside or, and that would make a good one you could drill a hole in this pure vacuum insulated stainless steel wine glass the problem with this one is that for small hands it probably works well or if you really want a tight fit I'm squeezing my hand in there it's not really gonna come off this is about a six dollar solution before you put the hook in this is a relatively inexpensive solution these run about right about two bucks and you can see you can put your hand in there you just drill a hole in the top here I've just spray painted some metallic gold one of the <coughs> like a hammock hook or what have you that I had and this was kind of the shape I was looking for on the hook so you can kind of see got fairly close so what you do is you take and you put this u-bolt into a vise you can just easily bend it you'll need the nuts later put it in the vise and you can actually use this for leverage use I'm just using a Phillips wrench because it's got a nice little hole there you could use any any kind of major tool that has something that, that's kind of tough then you can actually bend it in the vise and get it to whatever shape you want as far as cutting it you can use a hacksaw trim it down to whatever length you want file file it down or if you have such a thing, a grinder makes quick work of it all for cutting and for shaping. But I found that, that you know, I did all the final work with the file. It worked pretty good. These few bolts, which are fairly easy to manage and to make a hook like this, are only a buck thirty-seven, two forty-eight for this. So almost twice as much. For this thicker one is it is for this one yeah. and I'll see if how easy it is to bend in preparation for how I want to do this so I went in here and I kind of marked where I wanted my bend point in so I knew where to clamp it down in the vise I want to give plenty of room for the washer and nuts on both sides so I'm thinking I'm gonna go for a straight bend right about here just above the this where the threads are here's the start of the bend for the bigger one I'm using this big crescent wrench for leverage still trying to bend that down a little bit and as you can see I've got this big arc that I didn't have to turn around and sometimes you need a form to shape it around I used this actually when I was shaping that hook you can see where it fit in there so that helped so when you're forming it it actually is going to keep the circle so we'll see how we do here took the vise and sandwiched in this piece of wood and I'm just bending around that until I get the shape I want I wanted to show you the setup here's just a standard three and a half inch deep metal bench vise and then I'm putting it in here clamping it down really good crescent wrench is a lever arm putting it in there and this just kind of bending on it and then putting all my weight on it and bending it that way and it seems to be working surprisingly well all right well that really wasn't as hard as I th was thinking it was gonna be another eighth of an inch thicker if you don't care about that too much let's see if you can get a really kind of a contrast here I mean it's got more gravitas it's got more oomph but it's a little harder to bend than this one I don't know it's certainly a preference one way or the other okay here you go two hooks they're subtly different they're close but to try to make identical hooks every time I guess you're better than me these are solid I asked my wife, I said, do you like the thinner hook or the thicker hook? 
and she said she preferred the slightly thicker hook. The hooks are finished. I'm kind of happy the way they turned out. You know, when you when you grind or sand that down, it's like giving it a weathering, and it gets a little different kind of shine on it beyond the ankle or the crook there. And I made these intentionally dull because they could be considered weapons, obviously. You could sharpen them up if you really desired to do so, but this is more about fun, not about violence. Now we are going to turn this and this into hooks. Certainly this would be an option for anybody to try to use if you want stainless steel. Now, to make the holes, I'm going to take a washer and center it up and then hit it with a center punch. And you can see where I've cut off the handle. See where I use the hole punch and washer technique to find the center? I'm going to gradually drill that down to 3 8 Same thing for this. Drill the holes. I've taken a little bit of metallic antique copper paint and touched up the bolt for the top and the sides. Take the bolt all the way to the end, run a 3 8 inch washer on top of it. And this is great because before I paint it, I'm going to show you what the inside of it looks like. Then I'm going to put a washer on the other side of this. 3 8 inch. A 3 8 inch lock nut. This is a little tricky. With the washers on both sides, on this Lexan, you're going to be fine. On this one, I think I just need a bolt because this is so tough on the on this side. This side I'll have a, probably have another lock nut. So you tighten this down. There you go, the inside. And then when you slide your hand in, you just put your index finger over this side like this, and you've got it. Now if your hand, if this is too big for you for some reason, I'm thinking I might be able to put something in here flat. I could put it in um, a little thing here in a nut, just kind of the, to hold it on to, but you can see I can hold on to it and I just pressure my hand. If you got a really small hand, I guess you could put on a, like a cotton glove or something. So that's what your hand looks like inside of the hook. You lefties. Okay, very comfortable. And it just naturally fits. And then you can either run the shirt on the inside or run the shirt on the outside. Just use some double stick tape and, and tape it on there somewhere, wherever you feel like doing it. I'm gonna paint this with the hammered finish. Tape this all off. I'm gonna paint, this is all gonna get painted. And then I have an idea of putting in some detail almost rivets so that'll be after I paint it up and let it dry uh, a little quick thing you know sometimes when you're you're taping something up like awkward like this you it's really hard to find the end so I usually fold it over like that so that when I go to pull it off I, I, I can find it right away and here are the finished products this is the gold here is the hammered finish paint with the 3 8 inch hook and that's that hammered metal so it looks more than just straight black it's got a nice sheen to it and then I'm thinking about putting in a detail like that just to kind of offset the black a little bit and look like rivets just some thumbtack and I've taken the little pliers and a snipper. I've snipped the end off. Thumb deck and then I'm just using that. And I'll just hot glue those in place. See like that. A little bit of detail. And then the paste of the resistance. It's got a nice little ring to it. This is the copper Moscow mule with the 3 8 inch hook. Lots of room inside there. It's got a nice shine. You could weather this up, obviously. And as you can see, the hooks are weathered. <coughs> and when you're bending them, you're just kind of giving them little nicks here and there. Bottom line cost. If you have the paint, then you're just buying this for a couple bucks. This for a couple bucks. So you're in $5. If you have to buy the paint, that's probably another $4. So you're $9. Okay. But this is not... Well, it's plastic, but it doesn't look plastic. This looks real. 
and it's got some toughness to it. So you're in about four dollars plus paint on this one. This one you got a six dollar cup if you don't have to paint it. I did touch this up a little bit on the bolt with some copper paint I got for a buck. So you got this which is two dollars two and a half dollars plus this six dollars so that's eight dollars nine dollars and you got a really spiffy hook. There you go. The three styles of hooks for under ten dollars probably under five dollars if you got the paint. Thumbs up and comments always appreciated. Thanks for watching and enjoy being a pirate!